Welcome back to this Football Manager 2019 experiment where I switched all of the English leagues around. We swapped the real life Premier League and Championship clubs with the National League North and South. All of the divisions were mirrored. If you do want to play using this database, you can download it from the Steam Workshop via the link in the description below. Thank you for the support on the first two episodes. I'm glad lots of people enjoyed this experiment. Once again, something I've done pretty much every single year since my channel started, but I always find it fascinating to see which teams go on to dominate English football, the teams that can compete with those real life Premier League teams when they finally get promoted. And we're starting to see those teams creep back up towards the Premier League, of course. Uh, I'm gonna go three more seasons in this part three, and then in part four, I'm probably gonna holiday maybe 10 years into the future. We, we can then do maybe another 10 years after that, but that's that's my plan as it stands. So as you can see, the 2022-23 season was won by Dulwich. 82 points, five points clear of Stockport. They've just come from nowhere, really. Uh, were they in the top flight all the time? No, they were promoted. But the last two seasons, fourth and fifth, and then suddenly top of the table with Lee Bowyer in charge of the club. Remember, if you spot anything interesting, stick it in the comment section. I don't see everything. I know someone spotted that Nicholas Bentner signed for Man United. Uh, I didn't see that myself. Uh, but as you can see, two top goal scorers, Jensen for Chester, Batshuayi for Sunderland. That's two interesting things already. Bath City, Hungerford and FC United relegated to the Championship. We've got Stockport, York City qualifying for the Champions League. Barnet qualify for the Europa League. Looks like other teams have managed to win the League Cup and FA Cup once again. But we've got Sunderland in here now and they didn't actually win the Premier League. They had so many successive promotions to this division, you know, Four promotions in a row, and then they were unable to win the Premier League this year. But still not a bad start for them in the Premier League. Perhaps they can win it next season. Let's just have a quick look at Dulwich then and look at the team. What sort of players do they have? So they've got... Oh, it's a different Suarez. I was going to say Luis Suarez, but it's the Colombian Luis Suarez. Fraser Hornby up front. Scottish attacker, Scottish striker. Bonatini's playing for them. James Rodriguez has signed. I think someone spotted this in the previous part, but Dulwich have signed Rodriguez, but they've loaned him to Getafe this season. That's really weird. What? Why is... Th that's just bizarre. Why would they do that? He's a quality player. There's some good players in this team, as you would expect at this point. Uh, they are rich. Let's look at their stadium. What do they have? So they've they've built a new stadium, 12,500-seater. What I was saying at the end of the last part, that, of course, these teams are spending a lot of money on actually building stadiums. That's one of the biggest problems. Um, of course, some teams are currently playing in other grounds whilst their stadiums are being built. We'll move down to the championship then and see who was promoted. So Liverpool and Man City predictably promoted to the top flight. So they're probably going to win it next year. One of those two will win the Premier League next year, I suspect. But it's, it's not taking long for those two to go up. And Liverpool have always finished ahead of Man City, haven't they? Both teams didn't lose a single game this time around, though. Liverpool did draw against Man City, spending one and Man City twice. Man City one more draw. Northampton, Borenwood, St. Albans, those draws there. Borenwood would go up via the playoffs. Hampton and Richmond, Slough and Western Supermare relegated. Eden Hazard, top goalscorer in the championship with 34 goals. But this guy for Chippenham, Courtney Baker-Richardson, top, uh, second top goalscorer. Shakiri still ripping up the, the, the leagues that he's played in so far. He's been exceptional, hasn't he? So, yeah, Liverpool, easy, easy from them. They've still got Salah. They've still got all these players, despite the fact they spent a lot of time outside the Premier League. Same with Man City. Have they still got Guardiola? They do. Yeah. And they've still got loads of players. Of course, they signed Eden Hazard as well. In fact, let's have a look. Do I didn't check to see if Liverpool still have Klopp. They do still have Klopp. So those two have ripped up England and gone all the way to the top very quickly. Let's go down to League One then, where we've seen Chelsea and Arsenal go up. They only lost one game each all season. Uh, Chelsea lost against Sal Salford and Arsenal lost against Chelsea. But yeah, Salford still haven't managed to go up. Berry go up via the playoffs with Halifax, Barrow, Ebsfleet and East Thurrock going down. Maratta, joint top goalscorer of this Chesterfield player. 
And he did get the top average rating there, as you can see there. So Chelsea and Arsenal in the Championship, they're going to be going up to the Premier League very soon as well. What about Man United, though? They have managed to win League Two, with Spurs going up via the automatic places with Colchester United as well. Crew Alexandra going up via the playoffs. Harry Kane, top goal scorer in League Two, with 37 goals. Uh, Philippe Anderson playing for Man United with the best average rating in the league. Sutton United and Macclesfield relegated to the National League, where we saw Burnley win the league quite comfortably, well ahead of Bristol City, who went up via the playoffs. Everton, Southampton, West Ham, Stoke, a few big teams still stuck in this division. Wolves are still there. Bournemouth, uh, Scunthorpe, Gloucester, Luton Town and Truro City relegated. Have Truro been relegated every year? Possibly. Oh, no, they spent one year. I think, who was it? Gloucester. I think it was Gloucester that were relegated every year, weren't they? This is the National League North, then. West Brom have been promoted with Derby going up via the playoffs. Huddersfield, a real-life Premier League team, still stuck there as a Newcastle. What on earth has happened to Newcastle United? We've got Sheffield United, Villa, Middlesbrough, Leicester City. They're the lowest team, in fact. Let's have a look at Leicester. What on earth has happened to them? They've got... Oh, they're in debt. In fact, what we could do, we could look at the in-game edge to see what the situation is. I'm interested to see how much debt they have. So financially... What's that? Minus 3.2 million, I think, if my eyes are looking at that correctly. So, yeah, they're in trouble, uh, Leicester. They've still got Kasper Schmeichel, though, at the age of 36. I don't know if there's any other players here that they've kept hold of, but I think the team, yeah, it's starting to to dwindle, isn't it? Uh, let's look at Leeds, uh, Newcastle, sorry. So, Newcastle, are they in financial difficulties? Okay finances, but they're still stuck. In the National League, they've still got Darren. Well, they've got Darren Randall. They've got Wes Frodringham, a couple of decent keepers. Matt Ritchie still there. John Joe Shelby, Mark Albrighton. But West Brom and Derby have managed to escape this horrible pit of doom. Uh, the National League South won by Fulham with Swansea going up via the place. We've still got Crystal Palace. Watford are still stuck here with all these other teams. Uh, I think that's it. Is that the only Premier League teams? Oh, Cardiff as well. Cardiff. Are stuck. Um, let's look at Watford. I'm surprised they haven't gone up. Everyone's always accusing them of being a bit overpowered on Football Manager because of Miles Jacobson, but it uh, isn't the case here, is it? It's Troy Deeney still playing for Watford at the age of 34 whilst they're in the National League South. Are they in trouble? Oh, they're in a bit of trouble. Trouble. Minus 380 grand. It's not the worst, but yeah. It's not ideal for Watford, that's for sure. FA Cup then won by Manchester United, so they qualify for Europe next season thanks to a comfortable FA Cup final win. The League Cup was won by Chelsea, the, alter the other winners. Chelsea managed to beat Man United, they lost in the FA Cup, they won the, the League Cup final 2-1 in extra time, so they qualify for the Europa League as well. Champions League won by Real Madrid again. They beat Lyon in the final. Interesting final. Semi-final. I don't suspect any English teams have managed to get to the latter stages. First knockout round. Not this time around, unfortunately. Let's have a look at our boys then. How did they get on in the group stage? So Chester bottom with one point. Southport bottom with one point. Uh, Arsenal finished third with five points. Remember, they qualified because of winning the Europa League. Someone did point out they didn't know why Arsenal had managed to win the Europa League because at the time they weren't even in the league. Um, so they must have been, I must have broken the game by doing this, I suppose. The Europa League was won by Leverkusen. Let's just have a look at the English team. So Liverpool went through top of their group with 18 points. Alfreton went through as well with 9 points. We'll have to look at the, group, uh, the knockout rounds. Chelsea also went through comfortably. I think that's everyone. So let's go through to the first knockout round, see how the English teams got on. So Alfreton beat Ghent to go through to the next round. Liverpool knocked out by Nice. And where's Chelsea? Chelsea knocked out by Roma. So Alfreton, the furthest team for England. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, I mean, Sorry, Arsenal, of course. Arsenal also got through. They lost 4-1. What am I going on about? I don't know. My mind's gone to mush. But Alfreton lost against Fenerbahce at this stage, unfortunately. So Alfreton, Sean Dyche is in charge of Alfreton. That's brilliant. They've been really good on this. They, of course, won the first league title. And they've basically been, well, they've been in the top six ever since. And they finished sixth this season as well. Let's move on to the next season then. So after all those seasons chasing Liverpool up the Football League pyramid... Man City have managed to win the Premier League, only losing one game all season, which was against fifth place Stockport. Look at that top five. Man City, record number of points. Liverpool with 97 points. Pretty unlucky not to win it with 97. Dulwich third, champions from last season, of course. 
then Sunderland, and then Stockport. Alfreton still consistent. Sixth place, great stuff from them. Barnet qualify for Europe. They must have won a cup. Lincoln, Blythe Spartans and Boreham would relegated to the championship but the big boys are back in town and Man City and Liverpool are probably going to go and dominate now this is why I'm going to holiday 10 seasons in the next pot this is when it gets a little bit less interesting because we're going to see these real life Premier League teams returning to the top winning the leagues but it'll be interesting to see how long these other teams can last at this level Dulwich third really impressive considering I mean that they were top last year so I suppose you'd expect them to finish third but they did finish ahead of Sunderland which isn't bad at all this player top goal scorer for Alfreton in the Premier League, 24 goals. Salah, at top average rating, most assists this season. He's now uh, 31, but he's he's completely obliterating the Premier League once again. Not goals-wise, but he's... Oh, Lukaku, playing for Man City. He moved from Real Madrid on a free this season, and he got the third highest number of goals in the league. Let's just have a quick look. Who, how, how much did they spend? They probably didn't need to spend much. They spent 94 million, sold 41.5 million worth. But they didn't, yeah, they didn't really need to. They signed Kante from Chelsea, from the Championship, of course. Interesting. Let's go down to the Championship then, which was won by Chelsea. And Arsenal have also gone up. Gone up. So the, next, the top four next season is going to be predictable, isn't it? Mansfield went up via the playoffs. Oh, my boys, Chumps had relegated with St. Albans and Leamington Spa. Have you? Is that, oh, that's a different Hernandez. One Hernandez. Uh, Morata's second top goals with the Chelsea Twosome up front, scoring all the goals. Mkhitaryan for Arsenal, 17 assists. Fabian Delft plays for Mansfield. That's brilliant, isn't it? Moved from Real Sociedad on a free this season. He's 34 years old now. League One then. Won by Manchester United. They didn't lose a single game. Spurs finished second. They lost three games against Man United, Salford and Grimsby Town. Salford still failing to go up. They've been quite consistent. They've been, I mean, only one season where they really dot, uh, dipped. But yeah, every other year in the playoffs, they just... Stuart Pearce is in charge of them now. And they just, they can't seem to get up, can they? Maybe they should take something for that. Newport County, sixth place. Went up by the playoffs. Eastbourne, Harrogate, Western Supermare and Aldershot relegated. Harry Kane top scorer again. 41 goals. Better than last year. Philippe Anderson, 28 assists. Not bad at all. So, League 2... Burnley and Bristol City go up once again, ahead of Exeter City and Port Vale as well, with Fylde and Dartford being relegated. We haven't seen a team... I mean, last time I did this experiment, we had sort of a Premier League team get to League 2, and then they get they got stuck, and they just sort of plateau. But we haven't had that yet, really. Bournemouth, though, interestingly, where are they? Because they went up in the first season as champions of uh, National League South, and they're still stuck. So that, that this is a team that has plateaued. Look, 4th, 6th, 7th, 6th, this year 11th. So they did actually get into the, the National League playoffs every year, but failed to go up this year. Not great from them. And despite going up right at the start, it's not, it's not giving them a boost, has it? At all, Southampton and West Ham, my team, promoted to the Football League. Fulham and Everton still stuck here with Wolves as well. Stoke, West Brom, Bournemouth, Swansea, some big teams. Bristol Rovers, Gillingham, Sutton United and Macclesfield relegated. National League, North End. What's happened to Newcastle? Middlesbrough promoted. Leeds go up via the playoffs. Huddersfield still here. Leicester still here. Newcastle all the way down in 12th place. Walsall, Tamworth and Hednesford relegated. National League South, Watford, champions. So they've finally gone up with Crystal Palace. The two real-life Premier League teams going up. I think Cardiff for the last one's left. This is looking a much weaker league. QPR, uh, so championship or Premier League teams. Cardiff, QPR, Millwall. Is that it? I think so. Truro, Whitehawk and Enfield relics. So Truro, Truro started. What, did they start in the top flight? Or championship? Championship. They're all the way out of it now. They're completely out of the Football League pyramid that we can see. Troy Deeney, top scorer, by the way, in the National League South to help get Watford promoted. So FA Cup, Chelsea versus Dulwich in the final. Dulwich unlucky. Uh, two, the Chelsea went 2-0 two up, two up, thanks to Abu Baker. And uh, they scored a 95th minute consolation penalty. Unlucky. Um, League Cup... Barnet win it, and we had two different teams in the final. This is the first time we've seen an interesting League Cup final. Stockport won, Barnet two. They win it in extra time. Fantastic stuff, and they've qualified for the Europa League as a result. Barcelona have won the Champions League. Finally, something a little bit different. Thank goodness for that. They beat Juventus in the final. 
Uh, I suspect once again no English teams in the knockout rounds. No, it's a shame. Uh, York City third, so they went into the Europa League, which is good. And Dulwich bottom of their group with four points with Stockport third as well. So they go into the Europa League. Dulwich a bit unlucky. They've done quite well, haven't they? So let's look at the Europa League then, which was actually won by Chelsea. Chelsea beat Man United in the final. So Chelsea qualify for the Champions League next season in their first season back in the Premier League. But let's just have a look at the group stages then to see how our English teams got on. Barnet third, seven points. Not bad, but they've qualified next year thanks to winning the League Cup. I think that might be it. Uh, oh no, Man United, of course. Man United through and Chelsea through as well comfortably. So first knock around, we'd have seen York in here as well. So Chelsea went through, Stockport went through 5-3 on aggregate and York unfortunately lost against Marseille. Man United beat Gem. Second knockout round, Man United and Chelsea easily went through and is this where it ended for Stockport? Yes. Oh, in fact, Chelsea beat Stockport to get through. Stockport have done well, haven't they? Michael Brown, the manager. They're rich. They've got money. They've, uh, I think they've built a new... St oh, no, this is still the, their old stadium. They didn't actually need to build a new stadium because they already had a big enough stadium. So they've benefited from the money probably more than other teams because they haven't had to pay for a new stadium. Oh, look, they've got Christian Eriksen. They signed him for £19.5 million from League Two Spurs last, well, at, at the start of the season. That's that's brilliant. So this is the third and final season that I'm going to look at today. Uh, I'm going to holiday 10 seasons into the future after this point for part four. So it'll probably be a few days until that part four comes out. But Man City, champ I mean, that top four. Oh, it's so predictable. I was really hoping that perhaps Stockport or Dulwich could break into that top four. But no, Man City champions, Liverpool second, Chelsea third, Arsenal fourth, Stockport fifth. So they do qualify for the Europa League. Dulwich in sixth, Alfreton. Where are they? Down in 50. What's happened to Alfreton? Southport, Boston and guys relegated. Belotti, top goal scorer for Liverpool, as you can see there. But Alfreton, my boys, they are still rich. But maybe it's just a competition this year. It's been, it's been too much for them. Let's have a look at manager movements. There's no, nothing particularly interesting there. Man City still have Pep. Still signing lots of players, probably. 114 million, but they sold 83 million pounds worth of players. So it seems that they're a bit more within their means now. What about Liverpool? Liverpool have signed 85 but sold 72. Still got Klopp. Chelsea have uh, still have Sarri in charge, by the way. And he's signed £83 million. Pounds, so a bit more money this time around for Chelsea. That is Vargas, their top, uh, top uh, signing. And lastly, Arsenal. Who now have... They've still got Emery in charge. So all these managers have stayed with these clubs. It just kind of shows how money is such a big thing now. It could be relegated to the National League South and North. They still, because of all the money, I don't, in real life, I don't think this would happen, but on the game, you know, they've still got all that money to spend and it, it doesn't make any difference really to them because of all the money they've built up or the massive fan base they've built up. But would the fan base stay around? Probably not, let's be honest. Let's go down to, in fact, I want to look at the stadiums whilst we're here. So the biggest stadiums, of course, are the big four. Sunderland next, Southport. Oh, they're playing at Wigan Stadium. Dulwich have expanded to 20,141. Chester's is next. I remember when I holiday quite far into the future in the last one, last experiment last year, they did have some bigger stadiums over time when these some of these teams managed to stay in the top flight for a long time. If we look at the championship, of course, Man United and Spurs are the biggest, MK Dons. Uh, we've got two teams still playing at Bolton Stadium. Charlton, of course. Boreham Woods playing at Vicarage Road at the moment. Hungerford, I think that's a new stadium. Hungerford Stadium, built in 2021, yep. Chippenham, likewise. I don't know what the stadium capacity, the, like the minimum is for the championship. Not entirely sure, but let's have a look then at the championship. Won by Man United, they didn't lose a single game. The big six are back into the top flight in the, the least amount of time possible, basically. Ah, oh, that's boring. But never mind, it just shows... It just shows that that's the result of this experiment. However, in the next 10 seasons, I want to see if there's any of these teams that can compete with the big six. If any of, like Dulwich, can they break into that top six with the money that they have now and a bigger stadium? Or is it just going to be the big six taking back the reins of English football? Chippen and promoted back to the top flight. They've been, they spent a few years in the top flight and relegated a few years ago. Darlington, Newport County and Torquay relegated 
to League One. Philippe Anderson's ripping up English football, by the way. It's 32 now, but yeah, been beasting it. League One, Bristol City and Burnley once again promoted together. Leighton Orient go up via the playoffs. Leamington Spa, Cambridge United, Hampton and Richmond and Yeovil relegated Salford all the way down in 16. I keep highlighting Salford, but I was a team I was expecting to get to the top flight because of the money they have, but it just didn't happen. I'm sure there's lots of people pleased with that. Uh, League Two, won by Southampton. So Southampton and West Ham go up together once again. Dover go up, you know, 31 points behind West Ham, but they still go up automatically. Ebbsfleet go up via the playoffs with Eastleigh and Barrow relegated. National League, Crystal Palace go up again. Bournemouth have finally been promoted to the Football League after all these years stuck in the National League. Oxford, AFC Fylde, Peterborough and Dartford relegated. Stoke almost relegated with them. Watford's first season in this division didn't go too well for them. Leeds in 13th. National League North. What, what about Newcastle? Nope, Norwich are champions. Going up with Hull City. Newcastle down in 10th. Are they the worst Premier League team? No, Leicester, one place above them. Both of them have really struggled. Really, really struggled. Uh, we still have Cardiff in the National League South, don't we? And they've actually lost in the playoff final against South End. That's brilliant. Wimbledon go up as champions. Cardiff still stuck. This is where it's more interesting, the lower levels at this point, because the top flight, yeah, Man City, Liverpool, they're all going to dominate. But at this level, we've still got some teams stuck here. Newcastle, Leicester, Cardiff are still stuck in the National League North and South. How long will they be stuck there? Will they just turn into National League North and South teams, non-league teams? Are they still professional? Cardiff still a professional team. They are still a professional team, but maybe it'd be better for them to go semi-pro at this point because they're really struggling, aren't they? FA Cup, boring. Liverpool 2, Arsenal 0. League Cup, boring. Man United 2, Chelsea 1. Oh, we saw an interesting final last time around with Barnett winning it, but not this time. Barcelona win the Champions League for the second season in a row. Man City got to the semi-finals. I mean, English football has been impacted upon quite big, quite greatly, but Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea reached the quarterfinals of the Champions League this season. So, yeah. Uh, did we? In fact, were there any interesting teams in the Champions League this year? No, I don't think so. Chelsea... Oh, there's Dulwich. Dulwich finished third, so they went through to the, the Europa League, which was actually won by Juventus against Anderlecht in the final. But we saw Dulwich reach the second knockout round of the Europa League, they lost against Monaco. Not bad at all. So in the first knockout round, they they lost. Oh, Stockport lost as well in the first knockout round. Dulwich beat Roma in the first knockout round. That's fantastic. So the England team, currently 18th in the world rankings, as you can see there. Long way behind. This might be because of the, the weird stuff I've done to the database. Uh, I want to see the team. So Pickford plays for Barnet. That's brilliant. This, this is what I'm interested in, these Crazy stories. They signed him from Everton when they were in the National League for £16 million. We've got... A lot of players have just moved abroad, which is kind of what you'd expect. Butland at Lille. We've got Nick Pope at St. Dory. We've got Phil Jones at Krasnodar, which is random. John Stone's playing for Liverpool. Uh, Leon have Callum Chambers. Rob Holdings at uh, Espanyol. We've got Ainsley Maitland-Niles playing for Dulwich. Look at how versatile he is. Crazy. Signed him from uh, Arsenal when they were in League One for £37 million. And now he's uh, an England regular. Session Young playing for Real Madrid. Now Harry Winks playing for Galatasaray. And Marcus Rashford playing for Barnet. They signed him for £25 million from Spurs. He signed him for £23 million way back when. That is amazing. Rashford, 78 caps, 24 goals for his country. Playing for Barnet. I love that. So I think we'll end it there. Thank you for watching this part three. It's been a little bit predictable at times, but there's been been some interesting stories as well. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Like I said, part four, holiday 10 years into the future and see how the landscape of English football has changed. If you've got any predictions, stick it in the, the comment section below. But I suppose the top six, six are likely to stay that real life top six now. But I'd love if Dulwich could break into it. That would be fantastic. But until next time, enjoy Football Manager. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you very soon.